Hey everybody, welcome back to City Sewers. Today, the chickens are three days old into their uh, dry aging that we processed uh, on Saturday. Today is Tuesday, three days later, and uh, I'm going to be shrink wrapping them today. I'm also going to be uh, weighing them on our food scale. That's what we're doing right now. I've got our scalding pot that we used on the stove right now. It's heating up for us to use the shrink wrap bags. Now I got these bags uh, on Amazon and I mean there's the bags not much to look at but they are poultry shrink wrap bags and you know it's it's a stack of bags <laughs> but um, the plan is that we're going to put the birds into the bag neck side down and then they get some plastic tubing that actually will uh, allow the air to escape from the body cavity of the chicken um, as the shrink wrapping process is happening so it has a place for that air to go and then it'll um, zip tie closed. But while we're waiting for this water to heat up you got to use hot water to get that um, that air pressure which a little bit of nerding out here. Um, the way that uh, a vacuum works is the fact that air molecules are bouncing around at a given speed based on temperature. The molecules move slower when it's cold, they move faster when it's hot. So if you take a chicken and put it in a bag and then you're going to put that bag in hot water, those molecules are going to start bouncing around and bouncing off of each other and they're going to look for somewhere to go to relieve that pressure. And so that's where those molecules are going to go shooting up and out of the bag. And that's how you get your vacuum seal. And then you close it before the pressure will equalize. And so then you end up with that nice tight seal. While that water heats behind me, I'm going to go through and pick, pick off any more of the little feathers that got missed by the plucker. Just clean them up, get them ready, get them weighed, and just prepare them basically while I wait for this giant pot of water behind me to come up to about 180 to 195 degrees. And it, right now, I just checked it, it's about 140, so it's still gonna be a little bit based on the volume of water. So. And here's our cooler full of chickens. So, got my work cut out for me. So now I've got this pot of water is up to temperature. It's between 180 and 195. Let's see, it's been boiling for a minute. Or not boiling, but it's been heating for a while. Let's see, what are we up to? So this water is about 190 degrees. Now I'm going to dip this chicken in and let the bag kind of shrink around it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch the straw off at the top so that when I pull it out, it's not gonna let that air suck back in to the bag. So, but I have this spatula here to help me push the chicken down so that because of the air in the bag, it wants to float. So I don't want to get burned. So I've got a tool to push it down. Push the straw, pull it out. Tighten the zip tie. All right, there we go.
So, 12 down. Yeah. So, what are you doing here? So, He's getting a fine little... Yeah, I'm just getting any feathers that the uh, plucker missed. You say my plucker missed feathers? Mostly like the wing tips and <laughs> a few like armpit feathers. And it looks like a store bird to me. Maybe a little extra neck. And a little less tail. A little less tail. All these birds. Neatly in a row. Looks like you got your ducks in a row. No, chickens <laughs> anyway. All right. You got several down. What is that? Number 16? It's funny. We, Amanda was just saying that as we get further down to the bottom of the ice chest, um, she's finding the chickens have more and more like fine feathers to pluck. I will take full responsibility for that since I was still learning that plucker. Um, but man, they're looking quite official. All in their cute little lines. I mean, marching lines because they're cadets. Yes, off to freezer camp. Well, what's the good news? I'm on the last one. Yeah, and all these chickens are in a row. <laughs> it's like a, a army of little cadets off to freezer camp. <laughs> Yay! You're just doing the recruiting for the final one. Oh my gosh. part is just trim off all that excess and uh, zip tie and goodness it looks like you can go to the store. Aren't they pretty? Wow. Lots of pretty birds. So we're done. Like this is officially like done done. These birds are packaged. They are ready for the freezer and I'm so happy. Yeah it's <laughs> been a long process. I guess officially a nine week process. Yeah. Uh, from hatchlings showing up in the mail, all the way to packages sitting on our counter ready to go in the freezer. Yes. Pretty pretty cool process all the way through, to be quite honest. Yeah, so I have our my little notebook here that has all of our figures. Chicken math. Um, yes, chicken math, about how much it costs to raise the chickens. Now, disclaimer is that I have not included the cost of the like the equipment that we made. Yeah, we're um, calling it fixed cost. Yeah. Uh, there's variable costs that go up. It's a price that increases as you increase the number of chickens. So specifically, the price to buy it right. and the feed you feed it. Um, is there anything else that really goes up with it? Maybe the bedding that you use if you're Incrementally, using Incrementally, sure, yeah. That, that, is a, that is a cost. And I think you have that factored in. I do. So that's good. Uh, but some of the costs that we did not include would be like, uh, the chicken plucker. We told you about that. We have a video on it that uh, should be released very soon. How to build your own. Uh, the kill cone. Both of those together, probably about 30 bucks. As well as the chick feeders that cost us chick feeders. only a few dollars. But you gotta really. buy a bucket of ice cream and enjoy that. Oh darn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are some little costs. And quite frankly, um, if you don't want to go through the process of making it and you want to go online and buy those things, you're going to spend a little more money uh, but right. not have the sweat equity, you know, the, the, you know, the time that you're spending to do it. Right. Very true. Which, quite honestly, my time, if we factored that into this, your time, if we factored that in, it'd be a much higher price per pound. Yes. <laughs> if we were trying to cover the actual cost. 
but we're not. This is done on our own personal time, right? This isn't our job. This is our homestead. This is our uh, hobby. Hobby, hobby farming, right? <laughs> All right. So take us there. What do we have for chicken math? Okay. So our initial cost to purchase the birds was sixty-three dollars and thirty cents. That was for Three birds. 20 birds. Ding. We also did have them vaccinated for Merrick's disease as well as coccidiosis, which is totally optional, but it was something that we decided that we should just go ahead and do. No, we, we are not able to afford um, to feed 20 birds organically. The feed surprised us. Dude. I, huge yeah, benefits in that this time. I bought six bags and intended to buy more because that was kind of like, well, we went through a lot of bags with the we'll last batch that we and did. maybe have to go get more. That right. was the whole, whole thought. Yes, and that was before we had ever had these super efficient feeders, which um, we actually have larger scale feeders that we use already on our adult hens. Yeah, we that, did the, the five gallon ones. I think they probably saw it in the other video, right. which was laying on its side because it, they knocked it over. It was empty by that point. Right. And we were, um, uh, we were I guess, not refilling it because... We were getting ready to call them the next day. Right, they they were fasting, so mm -hmm. they had eaten everything that was in it. But um, but even just those first few weeks when they're like in the brooder made a huge difference. Not having them wasting feed and dropping it into the uh, the bedding because yeah. once it's in the bedding, there it's gone. And oh my gosh, the stink of rotting uh, feed. Yeah. <laughs> like there were several things we did well. One was the water, and one was the feed. Yes. Both of those automatic feeders were uh, lifesavers uh, for, for quality of life for the farmer, I'll say. Yes. But, okay, so the feed that we purchased was uh, $17.95 per bag. And we only went through five of the six bags, so that ended up only costing us $89.75 in feed. Now, we do have an extra bag that we're actually going to go ahead and just keep, and we can feed it to our adult hens to give them that protein boost while they are molting and going into winter. So it's not really gonna be a wasted cost. Yeah. Bedding, I only used one, I think they're nine cubic foot bags, um, but I used one bag of pine shavings for their entire brooding process, which was really nice. Um, and that was $5.99. Um, so total cost of the birds, the feed, and the bedding, was one hundred and fifty nine dollars and four cents. Now, if you that want, sounds like a lot of money. It does until you think about how many birds there are. Right. That's the cool part about this. So I I've also calculated a cost per bird, and that was you take your one hundred fifty nine dollars and four cents, divide it by twenty birds, <laughs> and it was seven ninety five per bird to raise them for eight weeks and five days. There um, you go. Now. Of course, then you say, well, what does that really mean? Because when you're buying birds in the store, that's you're paying price per pound. Um, so to get price per pound, you need poundage. <laughs> so I went through and I weighed every single one of these birds. Now, I like did these notice... These are different sizes. Yes. Um, gender plays a role. Genetics plays a role. We have one chicken. This one that was <laughs> just significantly smaller than everyone else this particular chicken weighed two pounds 12 and a quarter ounces it's like a dinner date night it's a little chicken. <laughs> this guy is this the one i said was like the one should be in a store just gorgeous looking and today. there's a lot of really nice ones in here now what was the what was the big up. one the large one the biggest one um it's five something right no none of them even broke five pounds <gasps> Gasp. I know, I'm sorry. Which, while she's looking at that, uh, we determined that in the colder months, probably need to go a little bit longer. Uh, if we were to do this again, we'd probably wait another week. But, you know, coming up on Thanksgiving, we wanted to make sure we weren't having to rush back to the house and feed birds and that kind of thing. Right. So, um... But we, we waited almost nine weeks, so these birds made it nine yeah. weeks. Yeah, so I think that, yes, if we were to raise them again in the fall, we would probably wait until 10 or even 12 weeks to let them kind of get a little bit bigger. Um, because they're outside, the nights are dropping down into the mid-30s, they're burning more calories to stay warm, which means they're not putting on quite as much weight. But then again, um, we also knew that some of them were getting fat and had met their genetic potential, so... 
maybe. I guess we'll test that. There's no, no reason we couldn't test it that way next time. True. Uh, so the biggest bird that we had was four pounds, seven and seven eighths ounces. So almost four and a half pounds. <laughs> um, which, you know what, I think that's pretty good. Honestly, the grocery store birds are in the same ballpark, three to three and a half to four and a half pounds, and you're getting a lot more of the water weight, and so... Yeah, you're paying for an augmented bird. Right, they may... <laughs> these are a solid three to four pounds. Yes, these are, these are solid birds. Um, so I added up the total of just poundage of all the chickens. Um, so total weight of all these birds right here is 79 pounds two and a half ounces wow all right 70 so. 79 two and a half two and a half gotta get that half in yes it's we paid for that half we paid for that half 79 pounds that's pretty good 20 birds yes. almost 80 pounds of meat yes that's great um and honestly like people say well yeah but there's bones i use the bones you Every literally have a freezer packed right now with broth she made from the necks from these birds yes uh, so when you saw us cutting off the heads and necks and feet and everything those necks all uh, made it into a pot and made how many gallons of broth? Few. Uh, it made a little over a gallon. A little over a gallon of very actually thick, dark it broth. Was, it's beautiful, dark very beautiful. broth. beautiful. Um, but yeah, so the bones, I don't consider that a waste at all because when I roast a chicken, I pick all the meat that's left on the carcass and we use the bones and we make broth. So I'm still including that as poundage of usable chicken. Sure. Um, well, when you buy it at the store, by the pound including the bones so right. that's a very reasonable thing to do um and you know what it costs per bird what is the price per pound so because the math gets more like convoluted and confusing when you try to add in only two and a half ounces don't you take my two and a half ounces away <laughs> pay for those ounces i went ahead and just rounded it down to 79 pounds to get our total cost away. per pound <laughs> all right so what is the price so to get our cost per pound you get our total cost to raise the birds, which was 179.04, and then divide that by 79 pounds of chicken. And you end up with $2.01 per pound. Now, if we add in that two ounces, do we get to take away that one cent? Sure. Yes, we made it to $2 a pound. <laughs> well, $2 a pound is not insane to it's buy. It's really not. I mean, what do you, what, what, is, what is the rule you always say if you're gonna buy at the store? A dollar? What do you, what do you, what would you pay for a whole chicken at the store? 79 cents. About 79 cents. <laughs> so when you factor in, what would you pay for a home bird at the store? I mean, we see them, you could buy them right now for like $15 if I were to go to a farm. So that's half price. Um, Cause you are paying for the farmer's labor. Yeah. I mean, this is very low labor until the end, to be quite honest. Right. They were, they really were very little work except for processing day. Like, they're, they're chickens. Like, you don't have to sit there with an eyedropper and feed them. It's... <laughs> they when they showed up in the box, they had never eaten anything. And they figured it out pretty quick. I think you, you, you spend a little bit of time just showing them, hey, dip your head in that. Oh, that's food. Dip your head here, that's water. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, they, they really caught on. Learned from each other. Um, yeah, it was good. Yeah. So... Overall, I think it was a pretty good experience. At the grocery store, at least in our region, you're paying over $2 a pound for organic chicken. And granted, these may not be uh, cert certified <laughs> organic, right. but we know their treatment from the day they arrived here. We know everything they ever ate in their entire lives because they had never eaten anything before they came to our home. Yep, hatchlings in the mail. Yeah, they were day old chicks. So, and for anybody who doesn't know, hatchery bird, hatcheries will ship out their chicks the day they hatch or po possibly even the day after, but the yolk will stay in their bellies for up to three days. They do not need food or water for three days. So they arrive and they have not eaten anything ever. So we know everything they ever ate, everything that they experienced, like they, they lived their entire lives with us. And so we know how they were treated. And, you know, our kids, we're always kind to them when they're outside. Uh, that, that brings me to another thought on raising kids around these chickens. Uh, a lot of people tend to think it's weird that when we were outside processing them, the kids joined in. Uh, this is a learning process. Every bit of the homesteading, the 
home farm experience is a family experience. Um, I mean, the kids have been in and out of here while we're processing these. Uh, I'm working from home right now because it's COVID days. And I'm coming <laughs> out of the office looking at Amanda working away, you know, and chiming in. Uh, this is a family experience. And it so is. they've been through the whole thing with us. And so that understanding from the beginning, these aren't pets, these are food. It's teaching children a respect for them as animals. And, and even as we went through the, the killing process, the actual, okay, now we're taking this animal's life, it's a coaching, it's a teaching opportunity to say to the kids, um, we're, we have to respect this. This isn't a joke. This isn't, um, yes, it, it might seem sad. It might be um, kind of get you right in the chest, but recognize that anything you buy in a store, if you eat meat, it had to go through this. So we're going to uh, process these chickens with respect. We're not going to make jokes about them. We're not going to uh, feel terrible because they're still food. And, uh, and, and we're going to show you how the life cycle from beginning to end works. And then, of course, when we eat them, we're not going to let them waste the food. Uh, we're right. we're going we're gonna <laughs> to eat the entire bird and use it to its full, all the way down to cooking the bones for broth yes. uh, to feed our family. And, and that's the whole respect level that goes with uh, cooking and, and, and what really uh, understanding and using the resources that God's given us. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, a lot of people have a, a mental and emotional even disconnect of where their food comes from. I think it's really important to teach our kids where their food is coming from and the fact that yes, it was alive and yes, it has to give its life for you to eat the meat. The whole story of the three-legged pig, that's not a real thing. <laughs> Can't just <laughs> eat one leg at a time because yeah. it's a very special pig. <laughs> it's, it's a process and it's a very real and it's a very heavy uh, responsibility as human beings really to make sure that we are treating these animals with respect. But that's, I mean, we don't need to lecture the audience necessarily about this. You know this probably yourself because you're, you're paying attention to this. You're seeing the care that we put in things. But our kids, uh, that's one of the things we wanted to teach to them and instill in them that respect uh, for, for the process and, and understanding that this is a life. Yeah. And it's a tasty life. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, even, but it is to be respected. Yes, absolutely. And even beyond um, just the, the meat factor of raising them, they had an entire anatomy lesson when we were sitting there going through. Oh, it's through. science every day like with they, you and them. <laughs> they learned a lot, not just about where their food comes from, but they learned a lot about chickens and their bodies and how they work. And I think What's that, a gizzard? What's a crop? <laughs> yeah. Do we have a gizzard? Do we have that many guts? You know, that kind of Why thing. Why are there rocks inside this one? Well, that's because Daddy cut the crop. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, so it's... It's a learning experience for kids from start to finish for more than just about meat. It's how to care for an animal. Yeah. How does an animal's body work? It's, it's every step of the way they have been learning. And I think that's really cool. And it's a fun thing to be able to teach my kids and to share with them. What do you think about what does it take to... How much entertainment do you get from taking your kids to the movies? Or all the, the, the frivolous money we just spend on entertainment, right? I'm, I wouldn't, two dollars a pound seems like a lot for me, but I'm gonna go spend forty dollars on one pizza for my family or a couple pizzas yeah. for the night. I mean, we throw money at food like it's no one's business. This has provided uh, both a scientific entertainment aspect um, and then we'll provide food for 20 meals. Like that's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> More than 20, honestly, because we oh, actually- Oh, pie, yes. yes every... I named him pot pie because He's going to have lots of money. With the exception of maybe the tiny chicken, we'll get probably two meals for our family from each chicken. Yeah. Um, because we, well, maybe even three if you count in the broth that comes from the bones. Safe two, though, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, whenever I roast a chicken, I pick the meat off of the carcass and we make a pot pie with it the next day. So, like, that's 40 ish meals <laughs> for our family. We'll say 39. <laughs> That'll be date night. Date night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of, that's a wrap on the chicken. That's the chicken math in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, uh, we appreciate you guys following us on this. Um, if you're interested or you want tips or pointers, drop it in the comments. Uh, do like and subscribe because um, all those likes and subscribes, clicking that little bell, uh, bring other people to uh, kind of follow Amanda and, and our family, really our journey as we uh, homestead from home. <laughs>
<laughs> while I work from home and go through life <laughs> alongside you uh, and and you. <laughs> and honestly, if we if we do this again, I would love to uh, actually take you guys with us and do it week by week. It was not my intention for us to just kind of spring everything on you all at once that, oh, hey, guess what? We had chickens. We've had chickens this whole time. <laughs> um, oh, but we do have a very exciting addition coming up that we're not quite ready to tell you about. But I am going to start filming the um, next big announcement adventure. Uh, so do encourage you to join us on that. Yes, we're very excited. Yes, and... Uh, our newest editions will be joining us sometime in December, and we will introduce you at that point. Um, should we just tell them now it's a cow? No! <laughs> oh, it's not a cow. Not We're a not cow. allowed to have cows. There's no mini cows you can apparently have in the city, so you can mark that off. There's mini cows, uh, but you can't have them here in the city. Oh my goodness, and they're so cute. We've talked about them. When we move, the first thing we're getting is a mini cow after we get 10 more goats and stuff. <laughs> When we move, we're not moving anywhere. <laughs> we're city, so we're someday, <laughs> someday, someday, someday. Big dream, big people. But anyway, as always, this is your urban nerd with a goat herd and a counter full of packaged chickens at two dollars a pound. Chicken math, <laughs> telling you that you can grow where, where you're, you're planted. planted. Oh, That's a well, lot of chickens. Chicken. Plenty of them. Twenty two. Plenty of freezer space. <gasps> I know, right? So exciting. What's this?